Security Breach Ruin had an ending that was interesting for us lore hunters, if not a bit confusing for casual fans. Sure, Gregory not being down there isn't too surprising. The game seeded that twist throughout, but if you'd beaten Security Breach before getting to Ruin, which the game itself recommends you to do, then when you got to the underground pizzeria, you'd probably expect to see Burn Trap, the mechanical remains of William Afton. But no his pot is empty. Instead, further down you meet the Mimic, something the game itself says is a mystery. I really don't know what it is, but it's been trapped down here a really long time. Now, to the fans of the franchise invested in the books, this makes perfect sense. That's the Mimic, something we've known about for quite a long time at this point. But to book and non-book fans alike, one question still remains. So, are these the same character? Slices, put on your aprons, and let's bake ourselves a theory. This is going to be a very in-depth video. We're getting in the weeds on this one. I'll make sure to quote and source evidence wherever possible, but I hope you'll tag along with me for this one. First, let's start with what we know about Burn Trap. In-game, we don't really get all that much information about him. There's a lot we can assume and infer based off his design, location, and role in the narrative, but he's never really directly referred to outside of Gregory and Freddy going like, ooh, this guy looks dangerous, which, cool. Thanks. But looking at the model, we can see the remains of the outer casing of a rabbit animatronic with the ears and snout. Oh. The mark rotate. There's an endoskeleton that doesn't match any of the real endoskeleton designs we know about, 01, 02, and Glamrock, but it is intertwined with various viscera, including the majority of a skull and teeth. Final note, the eyes. They're pure black with purple dots for pupils. As far as location, he's in a charging station inside one of the burner rooms of the fake pizzeria from FNAF 6, underneath the Pizzaplex. And we also know that a massive amount of power was being drained into that pizzeria. With the location of this thing and its design, I'm pretty certain on what I think it is. This is the remains of William Afton after the FNAF 6 fire. Like sometimes the, oh, okay, I guess that's why you turn. Freddy. But yeah, I think that's like Occam's razor or something. Sometimes the most obvious answer is the correct one. Now, at first there was a question of whether or not this really is William Afton or not. After all, a huge plot point of security breach is that Glamrock Bonnie is missing, and the staff don't even know what to say because it was too bad to actually say what really happened. So a lot of us, myself included, kind of assumed, well, technically we do see Glamrock Bonnie at the end of the game, in Burn Trap because he was most likely destroyed by either Fanny or Fanny controlling Montgomery Gator in Monty Gator Golf. She then used his parts to help recreate William Afton, as she needed more material after the FNAF 6 fire, and what better than the most recent iteration of his favorite fursona, a rabbit. Bonnie's parts were probably used to help stabilize Burn Trap, so we do see him in the game. But Ruin showed us Glamrock Bonnie, and although he is pretty destroyed, all of his pieces are there. So whatever rabid parts are on Burn Trap are not from Glamrock Bonnie. More than that, the endoskeleton. This is tenuous evidence, but I think it's worth bringing up. While the endo design is consistent with itself, it's not consistent with any endoskeleton design we've seen in the actual games. It's somewhat close to a nightmare, but those aren't even technically real, and it's not close at all to Endo 01, Endo 02, or especially the Glamrock endos. However, there's one type of endoskeleton we've yet to see in a video game, a springlock suit. Brief reminder, springlock suits work because they have endoskeletons within the suit themselves that are held to the sides with loaded springs so you can put yourself in there. That's why a springlock failure is so dangerous. When the springlocks snap, an endoskeleton that's being held to the sides suddenly juts back to where your body currently is. It's a terrible design. Like, I get it's for plot, like it's, it's poorly designed because it's horror, but like objectively, the Springlock suit, I think, is the most viscerally horrifying creation in the entire franchise, and it was meant to just be a cool suit. The design of the endoskeleton itself is in many tiny pieces, but it works cohesively as a single endoskeleton. Burn Trap's endoskeleton could be the Springlock endoskeleton. This whole thing would just be the result of being Springlocked, and then wandering the town for like 40 years. Oh, and burning. So within this theory, if that's William Afton's corpse, is he still alive, or at least still walking around? No, at least I think his soul would still be trapped in Ultimate Custom Night created by Cassidy. The reason why is the eyes, or in this case, the window to the lack of his soul. Man, I feel like I've been wandering in these woods forever. Honestly, I don't even feel like I've made any progress. Oh, oh wait, another page. Okay. <clears throat> 
Let me share with you today's sponsor. I am a huge advocate for mental health and mental health support. As someone with ADHD and anxiety, I cannot stress the massive importance of things like therapy. It's what helped me get through college and what's helping me combat ADHD today. And even if you don't suspect anything is specifically wrong, life is hard and therapy can make it a little less so. Which is why I can't wait to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Therapy can be difficult to afford, let alone schedule. Which is why BetterHelp's mission is to make finding a therapist and getting therapy more affordable and more accessible. If you've ever gotten therapy, you probably know how difficult it is to find a good match, especially if there aren't many options in your area. BetterHelp is an online platform that can provide remote therapy sessions by matching you to a professional therapist in as little as few days after you fill out some questions about you. It's never been easier to sign up with BetterHelp and get matched with a therapist. The link in my description, betterhelp.com slash rytoast, can take you there. Not only does that link help support the channel, but you'll get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp, making it even more affordable to connect with a therapist and get some therapy to see if BetterHelp can help you. One of the more awkward aspects of therapy is finding a good fit. You need good cohesion. You gotta make sure the vibe is right between you and your therapist. And that's a really common problem in therapy. With BetterHelp, if you feel this way about your therapist, at no cost to you, you can fully switch over to a new therapist without having to worry about if they're in network or your insurance or anything like that. Back when my doctor told me to seek therapy for ADHD, it took me months, almost a year, to find a good therapist in my area that I fit well with that was taking new patients. If I had known about better help at the time, most likely I would have found a therapist way, way sooner than that. So if you've got something you're dealing with that's giving you a hard time, or you just feel weighed down by it all, or just want help in general, consider therapy with better help. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash rytoast. Thank you again, better help for some supporting the channel in today's video. Cool. All right, that's two pages. Let's press on. The books, and to some extent even the games, bring up the concept of agony. To quote a character from Fazbear Frights, Phineas Taggart, you see, I'm convinced that agony has a greater energetic radius and power than any other emotion. I've done numerous experiments to measure, capture, contain, and study the leftover emotion embedded into objects that were near a tragedy. My work is focused on my hypothesis that you can take a saturation of agony, add any kind of intelligence, even an artificial one, and they will combine together to transmute the energy of emotion into the energy of physical action. This, I believe, is what explains what people call haunted objects. I know that's a lot, but to summarize, essentially, agony works in the books kind of like living emotion. As long as something terrible enough happens near something, those things near it could be infected by that agony. And in the books, we see that objects that are created by or possessed by agony resemble this liquidy black ooze, almost like a liquid shadow. And what's the one thing Burn Trap has that no other iteration of Springtrap ever does, pitch black eyes. This theory would posit that Burntrap is what remained after the FNAF 6 fire. Henry was right in assuming that burning everything to the ground would destroy all the remnants still in those animatronics, but he might not have even known about agony. I think Burntrap is the agony of William Afton possessing the suit and corpse that was left behind after the FNAF 6 fire, the remains of Spring Bonnie and the man killed inside. So in that case, what is the Mimic? The books tell us most of what we know a Mimic is, but let's go over what the games tell us just to cover our bases. Physically, the Mimic is a mismatch of several different endoskeletons, weirdly humanoid robotic teeth, big white eyes with orange lights, and has the ability to change its voice. In the files, anytime the Mimic is pretending to be Gregory, the dialogue is listed as Grimic. We also see it's been trying to make a costume out of several different mascot parts. Whatever this thing is, it's been down here a while. Gregory doesn't know what it is, and it likes to copy things. So if this is all we get about the mimic from the games, what do the books tell us? The books don't take us directly to the game version of the mimic, but it tells us a lot about the book concept of what a mimic is. We learned that originally there was one program, Mimic 1. It was an AI designed to copy what it sees and recreate it. Its creator put the program into an endoskeleton to play with his son and called it the mimic. It worked great for a time, but before long his son died in a tragic car accident. Still 
riddled with grief, he saw the mimic replicating what his son used to do, even holding his son's favorite plushie. That was too much for him, and he savagely beat the mimic until it could barely function. The thinking goes that this infused it with his own agony. Eventually, Fazbear Entertainment gets its hands on the thing. Although it took a few tries, because the first team that went to collect things repaired the mimic, and then it started brutally killing anyone that entered in the area. The epilogues tell us a bit more. We find that a mimic is delivered to the Pizzaplex. Its endoskeleton is severely burnt, but it notably has a new shiny chrome head and two rabbit-like antennas. It's programmed by a worker to take the limbs off of staff bots and put them in a pile so they don't have to do it themselves. However, it runs out of staff bots eventually, turns to the workers, and continues doing the same programming, ripping them apart and putting them in a pile. The following epilogue parts detail it chasing down some intruder teens and trying to keep doing its programming, rip apart, put in a pile. And before we move on, something I've always thought was very important to note, the mentality of the mimic is seemingly drastically different in the story of the mimic and the epilogues. In the epilogues, we get a POV of the mimic and we see that it's just following programming. It's analyzing where it is, trying to figure out how to get to the next thing to rip apart, and following the orders, take off the limbs, put in pile. Whereas the mimic at the end of the story, the mimic, seems just aggressive and vengeful. It's killing people in weird and destructive ways, seemingly just doing it out of pure spite. So is this mimic the same guy in the books and the games? I don't know, but it seems unlikely to me. At least if it is the same guy, then a lot has happened between the end of the epilogues and the beginning of Security Breach. Book Mimic is described in a completely different fashion to what we see in Ruin, but the man mannerisms do match. The fact that the mimic puts on costumes, check. The fact that it can repair itself with other endoskeleton parts, check. And in a way explains why it's made up of so many mismatched parts. Even down to pretending to be a child through a radio system to lure someone into a trap, check. Whether or not the book and game mimic are the same character, they play by the same rules. All right, so that's everything we know about Burn Trap and the mimic in relation to themselves. So the logical question is, are these guys the same thing? I mean, sure, they're primarily endoskeleton-based antagonists that hang out in the basement for the majority of the game. But the more you look at the situation, the stranger it gets, starting with the ending that is canon and how that affects Gregory's knowledge of the mimic. It's still unconfirmed which security breach ending is actually canon, but between the fact that there's no comic page for it, Freddy is in the same location with similar damage done to him, and that Gregory, Vanessa, and Freddy's head are nowhere to be found, I'd say it is incredibly likely, if not nearly confirmed, that the canon ending for Security Breach is the good Vanny ending, where we beat all three Princess Quest arcade machines and Vanessa is freed from Glitchtrap's influence. Which would mean a few things. First, Gregory and Vanessa can leave the Pizzaplex and conspire their knowledge together, both of whom were at one point mind slaves to William Afton, or the Afton virus. Vanny to Vanessa, GGY to Gregory. If you're confused about Gregory, go watch this video and come back. Anyway, this fact is important because when referring to the Mimic, Gregory tells us he has no clue what it is. But if he'd been recovering with Vanessa, she would have specific knowledge all about it. Now, I do see a counterpoint here. If going from GGY to Gregory wiped nearly all of his memory of what he did as GGY, we could assume the same for Vanessa, where she doesn't remember what she did as Vanny. So if that doesn't convince you, I've got another point here. Gregory's burn trap ending boss fight. We see recreations of all the other various endings from Security Breach through Gregory's drawings, which implies that in some way they didn't happen as he created them. But the burn trap one is especially interesting to me. When I first saw this comic page, I just kind of assumed, oh, the burn trap ending didn't happen, these characters might not even exist. But on a second playthrough, I noticed that we see the blob leave at the beginning of the game, a blob that looks identical to how Gregory draws it. And if that's the case, and the blob is real, he would have had to either have seen it himself to perfectly recreate it, or have it described to him nearly perfectly by someone else. And if somebody else explained it to him, that someone would have had to be Vanessa, which means Vanessa would have retained at least some of her memory when she was acting as Vanny. But if that's true, then the mimic can't be Burn Trap. Hear me out, Vanessa was working directly under Glitch Trap, even digging the tunnels to where Burn Trap was using Glamrock Freddy. Vanny knows who Burn Trap is, why he's here, what they're gonna do to him. She knows everything because she's the one doing the work for Glitch Trap. So after the good Vanny ending, if she retained enough memory to remember what the blob looked like, then 
surely she would have remembered the thing next to the blob, Burn Trap. So if her and Gregory continued to survive together after the Good Fanny ending, there's no doubt that she would have told Gregory about what was going on at that pizza plex. He's a victim too, after all, he deserves to know. And if Gregory knew about Burn Trap and Burn Trap was the mimic, then on the elevator ride, why would he say he has no clue what it is? He knows what it is, Vanessa told him. So that line wouldn't make any sense. So no one really could have explained to him what the blob or burn trap was, which means if this picture is real, he would have had to see the blob. And if he saw the blob, he might have just saw this scene. The burn trap ending might have happened. You could only get there through a one-way elevator ride and then get to burn trap by going down a one-way hole in the ground, passing a blob that kills anything that isn't an animatronic. If Gregory got past all that and saw the blob, then more than likely at that point, the burn trap boss fight would have happened anyway. Which, at the end of the burn trap boss fight, burn trap is scooped up by the blob and we never see the two again until the beginning of Ruin, where the blob is nearly escaped the entire pizza plex at the beginning of the game. And if that happened, burn trap can't be the mimic. It's in the blob and the blob left, and the mimic is still there. In both of these explanations for how Gregory knows what the blob looks like, the burn trap can't be the mimic. It doesn't work. Unless... Okay, so there's one more thing that's always bugged me about the design transition from burn trap to the mimic if they are the same character, and that's the eyes. If they really are the same thing, why does burn trap have these black agony infested eyes, whereas the mimic has these white orange light eyes? Where did Afton's agony go? What if the answer lies within the burn trap ending? We see the blob scoop up burn trap and slither off. What if the blob just picked burn trap clean? If we look at the blob's face, it also has those pitch black eyes. This could be just a being of agony and wires and corpses even. So there's a possibility that it took whatever burn trap was, scraped off all the viscera and agony on it, and just spit out a crumpled broken endoskeleton that it had no use for. A spit out crumpled endoskeleton that was a mimic, capable of repairing itself as long as it had spare robotic parts. Lucky for it, it's in a fake pizzeria that was filled with robots, under a pizza plex that is filled with robots. Now this would technically imply that the Spring Bonnie endoskeleton was a mimic endoskeleton, or at least that Vanny used a mimic endoskeleton to try to repair Burn Trap. But this could possibly bridge the gap from Burn Trap to the Mimic. All in all, do I personally think that Burn Trap and the Mimic are the same thing? With that last theory, it's possible, but I think the most probable answer with the evidence we have at hand is no. Burn Trap and the Mimic, I think, are two fully separate beings. Mexis was most likely hiding the Mimic during the events of Security Breach. What is Mexis, you ask? Well, I have a whole video there explaining the entire thing and doing some theorizing. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best patrons, the Dough Risers, and until next time as always, stay toasty slices.